world news tonight. Flash floods. Dozens of Indian troops declared missing after flash flood stressed state of Sikkim. Chaos in the capital. Republican Kevin McCarthy ousted as the US House Speaker in unprecedented vote. Shooting spree. A mass shooting at a mall in Bangkok leaves several dead and multiple injured. One of a kind. Las Vegas Sphere hosts U2 as Facebook artworks dazzle crowds on site. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. A very good evening. You are joining us for World News. We have a number of stories lined up for you this Wednesday night. We begin in the US. The House of Representatives voted to oust its Speaker, Kevin McCarthy. For the first time in US history, the chamber has dethroned its leader. The motion to oust Kevin McCarthy, driven by a small group of right-wing Republicans, passed in a 216 to 210 vote, making him the first Speaker of the House to be ousted in a no-confidence vote. The motion to vacate the chair of the U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy was introduced by Republican Representative Matt Gates from Florida. Chaos is Speaker McCarthy. Chaos is somebody who we cannot trust with their word. Despite opposing views and support for McCarthy, also a Republican. And one thing Speaker McCarthy embraced from day one is to start making those kind of changes to this institution, opening up the process, allowing members to be more engaged, having amendments come to the floor, single subject bills, doing appropriations bills. No clear successor has emerged yet, but Representative Patrick McHenry of North Carolina has assumed the role of Speaker Pro Tempore. The ouster was set in motion on Saturday when Mr. McCarthy averted a government shutdown by passing a short-term funding bill with the help of House Democrats before it passed the Senate and was signed by President Biden. The 45-day continuing resolution displeased some Republicans in the House who accused McCarthy of not doing enough to cut federal spending. The vacancy comes at a critical time when Congress has just a little over 40 days to avert another potential shutdown of the government. According to the Indian Army, a powerful flash flood in India has led to the disappearance of a number of soldiers following heavy rainfall in the northeastern state of Sikkim. The searching operations are underway and the 23 personnel have been reported missing and some vehicles are reported submerged under the slush. Adding to this, the army stated that due to sudden cloud bursts over Lucknow Rik in North Sikkim, a flash flood occurred in the Tista River. A defense spokesman said that some army establishments along the valley have also been affected and efforts are being made to confirm the details. Around 15,000 people in the region were likely affected and at least eight major bridges were washed away by gushing torrents. The head of Sikkim stated that he humbly urged all the citizens to remain vigilant and refrain from unnecessary travel during this critical time. A deadly shooting spree in a well-known shopping mall in Thailand's capital Bangkok has left at least two people dead. The police have arrested a 14-year-old suspect who they say had been receiving psychiatric treatment. Hundreds of people scream and race into the streets in Thailand's capital Bangkok after gunshots rang out at a luxury mall. On Tuesday, a 14-year-old boy opened fire at sea in Paragon Mall in the city's crowded tourist hotspot, killing at least two foreigners, both women, one from China and one from Myanmar. Five others were also wounded. Shoppers recalled that the chaos happened in just a few minutes and multiple gunshots were heard. I feel frightened. I never thought something like this was going to happen. I live pretty close to this place. Now I feel relief as the suspect has been arrested. We, we see all the people run, run, run. We don't understand why it happened. And so we go after them. And after that we hear a, sh a shot, very shots. And, uh, Various shots. Very shots. Like lots, like, of, lots of shots. Yes, yes. How many? Like six, seven. Six, seven shots. The teenage suspect was taken into custody after a police officer apprehended and handcuffed an individual lying face down on the floor at the mall. 
Little information is given about the suspect who the police stress is very young and protected by the Child Protection Act, but told media that he had been receiving psychiatric treatment. He is being treated for a mental illness at the Rajavithi Hospital. He didn't take his medicine. He said he felt someone talked to him and told him to shoot someone. He felt like he had another personality. While mass shootings are rare in Thailand, the incident marks the latest high-profile gun violence to rock the country. It comes a year after an ex-police officer killed 35 people. Japan plans to begin the second release of wastewater from the crippled Fukushima nuclear power plant, releasing a similar amount as the first discharge. In the meantime, TEPCO, the organization in charge, has been receiving complaints and claims for compensation from the Japanese fishing industry due to reputation damage. And the city of Tokyo plans to run a promotion later this month to encourage people to eat seafood. Japan is reportedly getting ready to release a second batch of wastewater from the Fukushima nuclear power plant on Thursday. The Tokyo Electric Power Company will take a small amount of contaminated water which has been diluted with seawater and test the level of a radioactive substance called tritium. Then, if the level is below a safety limit, the release will begin as planned. The first release, which began on August 24 until September 11, saw 7,788 tons of contaminated water released into the sea. TAPCO plans to release a similar amount this time too. It will take around 17 days with 460 tons released each day. China banned all Japanese seafood imports after the first release and Russia is also considering following suit. TAPCO on Monday started receiving reports of reputational damage from the Japanese fishing industry related to compensation for foreign imports bans. The Nikkei Shimbun in Tokyo estimates the economic losses to be around 66 million US dollars. The Tokyo Metropolitan Government will run a promotion from October 27 to December 8, offering people up to 1,000 yen, approximately 6 US dollars in points, if they dine and seafood at sushi restaurants and fishy stores within the city. Moving on to the road to the White House. After declaring Donald Trump missing in action at the Republican presidential primary debate, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis followed up by taking shot after shot at the former president. He challenged Trump to a one-on-one -on -one debate, asserting that the GOP frontrunner's political shortcomings turned Georgia and Arizona blue and accused him of hiding from the campaign trail, a criticism akin to one Republicans levied against Joe Biden in 2020. It's all a part of a more aggressive approach DeSantis has taken in recent weeks, after months of dancing around whether to ignore or engage with the former president and as a fresh sense of urgency hangs over the race to try and slow Trump's march to the nomination. DeSantis also targeted Trump over the 2016 campaign pledge to force Mexico to pay for a new wall at the border, calling it an empty campaign slogan. This new phrase of the Santos campaign is taking shape with just over 100 days before the caucuses in Iowa, where a strong showing, if not outright victory, is paramount to DeSantis' viability. And it comes amid growing worries among conservative donors and operatives that Trump's lead in national polls and key nominating states is growing harder to overcome. Welcome back. A bus carrying tourists to a campground crashed off an overpass near Venice in Italy. At least 21 people died and 18 were injured from the crash. Nearly two dozen people died after a bus careened off a highway near Venice, Italy on Tuesday, many of them tourists. Local authorities confirmed five of the victims were Ukrainian and one was German. The bus was also carrying passengers from France and Croatia, according to Italian news agency ANSA. 
The tourist bus veered off the road and fell off an overpass in the district of Mestri, which is connected to Venice by bridge, before crashing into electricity lines near railway tracks, where it caught fire around 7.45 p.m. local time. At least a dozen more people are injured, several of them in critical condition, according to Venice officials. There are fears the death toll could rise. Authorities say 40 passengers were on board the coach, not including the driver, a 40-year-old Italian who was among those killed. While the cause of the accident remains unclear, one line of official inquiry was that the driver was ill before the crash. Late on Tuesday evening, rescuers were seen struggling to remove the wreckage of the bus to make sure no more passengers were trapped inside. One Venice official told firefighters had a difficulty getting most of the bodies out as the bus had been totally crushed. Former President Trump was back in a New York courtroom for the second day of the $250 million civil fraud lawsuit against him. He says he will be testifying at the appropriate time. Trump also criticized Attorney General James, saying she gave the judge false and extremely misleading information. Tonight, Donald Trump back in a Manhattan courtroom for the second day of the $250 million civil fraud lawsuit against him revealing he plans to take the stand. Well, the appropriate time I will be. But it was his comments on social media that prompted a dramatic ruling from the judge after Mr. Trump posted a photo of the judge's law clerk posing with top Senate Democrat Chuck Schumer. The judge ordering the post on Truth Social removed, saying, personal attacks on any member of my court staff are unacceptable. Consider this a gag order. The Republican frontrunner again going after the Democratic attorney general who brought the lawsuit. Judge Engoran has been given false and extremely misleading information about my net worth. Private company, nobody's supposed to know my net worth. A net worth the state says was deliberately inflated to get more favorable loan rates from lenders. While Mr. Trump's legal team says real estate valuations are subjective. Attorney General Letitia James also in the courtroom once again, her team calling Mr. Trump's longtime accountant to the witness stand, his firm preparing the disputed financial statements at the heart of the case, forced to admit today that he learned the Trump organization didn't provide the firm with all of the necessary records. Grim updates from Nigeria now. A blast happened at an illegal oil refinery in southern Nigeria. At least 37 people, including two pregnant women, were burned to death. A blast at an illegal oil refinery in southern Nigeria on Monday has killed dozens of people, including two pregnant women. That's according to a local security official and community leader. The explosion took place in Rivers State. Illegal refining is common in the country's oil-rich Niger Delta region. Impoverished locals tap pipelines to make fuel to sell for a profit but the practice is often deadly. Nigeria has tried to clamp down on illegal refineries for years, but without much success. Local environmental groups say part of the problem is that powerfully connected politicians and security officials are involved. Oil theft is one of the factors pushing major companies operating in Nigeria to shift their focus to deep water operations. Roughly 120 dolphins have perished in a tributary of the Amazon River. Experts think that the mass deaths may be linked to an extreme drought and heat that is plaguing the region. In a tributary of the Amazon River, researchers recover a dolphin carcass from the water. Scientists suspect the deaths are the result of severe drought and heat. The water temperature was very high on the day that 70 carcasses appeared. At certain moments, it exceeded 39 degrees Celsius. For this time of year, it's an extremely high temperature, and it is certainly related to the deaths. The Amazon river dolphins are among a handful of freshwater dolphin species left in the world. Scientists fear they could be threatened with extinction if mortality rates continue to rise. Extreme drought in the Amazon region has affected the rivers, which are the life support of thousands of inhabitants. The drier it gets, the more fish die and the more precarious the situation becomes. We're here asking for support from everyone in the municipal and state government who can help us in this emergency situation. 
nessa situação de emergência. We used to drink the water, but because it's polluted, we can't drink it. We're getting water by bringing it from the city where my father travels to. Brazil's government is assembling a task force to provide the region's inhabitants with emergency aid, including food, water and medicines. According to weather experts, the impact of the drought has been greater than usual as a result of the El Niño phenomenon combined with human-caused climate change. Welcome back. NATO has intervened in Russia-Ukraine conflict. For more on that story and more, let's take it around the world. The protest took place in front of NATO's military base in Kalka of southwestern Germany on German today. A protest which was against the military alliances fueling Russia-Ukraine tensions. A Houston company could soon claim the world's first soft commercial moon landing. A Texas-based firm hopes to make the landing by a commercial space car before the year is out. A fire broke out at a refuse collection depot filled with plastic in the eastern Croatian city of Osage. Firefighters struggled to get the blaze under control due to burning plastic. The Colombian state apologized for the first time to the execution of 19 young people at the hands of the army during the armed conflict. The apology stems from the 2015 sentence by a local court from the Santander state. Rio de Janeiro's Christ of Redeemer Satchel was lit up in bright pink to commemorate Breast Cancer Awareness Month. That is all we have for you on World News Tonight. If you miss any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight in Las Vegas, US, as Hollywood stars turned out in Las Vegas for U2's inaugural performance at Sin City's newest period of musical wedding. Thank you for watching. Good night.